Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is this is really last minute, but someone asked me if I could look at this part of the syllabus, which is the part where you are asked to describe features, landscape features on a topographic map. All right, so. This is the syllabus. Um, this is a part of the syllabus that speaks to uh, the description of landscape. The first part is asking you about relief. The second part about drainage. The third part about land use. And then you are asked to talk about the interrelationship uh, among all of these different things. All right, so here are the three things you, the, 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 this is the, this is talking about the land. Relief is talking about the land. Drainage is talking about water flowing over the land. And land use is talking about how the land is used. All right, so you should be able to look on a topographic map and talk about the land, the shape of the land, the features, the relief features being shown on the land, whether the land is steep, gentle, whether it's rising, whether it's descending, all of those things have to do with the land, the shape of the coast, still have to do with the land. Drainage has to do with, as I said, water flowing over the land. And land use is how the land is being used by people or naturally. All right, so let me quickly, quickly, quickly talk about um, the different things. So for relief, it says distribution, the distribution. So by distribution, it means where the different relief features are over the map area. So if you're asked to talk about the distribution of relief on the map, you're going to look on the map and you're going to try to, to, to say how the relief changes over the map area. Uh, height and size of landforms. For the height of landforms, remember the features on the map that shows height are the contour lines. Contour lines are those brown lines that you'll see on the map with a number on it which means everywhere along that contour line has the same height. In this case, it would be 200. And if you see another one that says 400 beside it, and another one that says 600 beside it, it means that the vertical interval of this map is 200. In other words, we're going up by 200. Now, another thing that shows relief on the map is a spot height. Spot height is a little dot with a number value beside it. For example, 35. So this will also show the height on a map. Then you could also see a little triangle, a little dot inside and, the no and a number beside it. Again, this is also showing the height at a particular point. So the spot height and the trick station shows the height at a particular point. The contour line is showing the height all along the, the line. Everywhere along the line has the same height. All right, so height. Then it talks about size of the landforms. Now, if you want to talk about the size of the landforms, you can use grid reference. So you're basically, you're looking at how, how 
the extent that a particular feature covers. So for example, if you have this map with these grid lines, so let's say we have 10, 11, 12, um, 22, 23, 24, and then we have a little hill. within this grid square. This feature, this this hill in 1022 has a smaller size than, for example, let's say we have a ridge extending all the way from this grid square to this grid square. It means that this extends over a wider area so this uh, this is this has a larger size than this one all right so you have the height of features and you have the size of features then you are expected to talk about types of slopes types of slopes and i've done a previous video on that um a lot of you might have watched that already types when, when you're asked to talk about types of slopes you talk about concave slope, convex slope, straight slope. Straight slope is the, is the same as even slope. And then we have terrace slope, which is the same as stepped slope. So when it comes on to concave slope, a concave slope is a slope that is steep at the top and gentle at the bottom. So this is how it would shape in reality. On a map, what you would find is closely spaced contour lines where the values are high. So let's say that this is 700, 600, 500. And the contour lines are close together there. And then let's say this is 400. And this is 300. Notice that where the contour values are smaller, showing lower land, the contour, the, 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 the contour spacing is wider. So this is a concave slope because it's steep at the top, gentle at the bottom. Now the convex slope is the opposite. Convex slope is gentle at the top, steep at the bottom. So it bulges in reality, all right? On a map, we will see widely spaced contour lines at the top. And then at the bottom, we will have more closely spaced contour lines. Now, remember you, you can only identify the top of a feature and the bottom of a feature based on the numerical values of the contour lines. All right. So the, the, the top might might be going to the north or it could be going to the south or to the east. It's not the direction that you're going to look at. It's the values of the contour lines that you have to look at. So that's the convex slope. Then we have the straight slope or the even slope. The straight slope is neither steeper at the bottom nor the top. The straight slope could be steep or it could be gentle. But how you identify the straight slope is that the contour lines are regular. They are, they are basically even, the, the spacing between them is generally even. So that's how you identify a straight slope. And then the final type of slope um, is the terraced or stepped. Now, this, notice it's not steep, but it's stepped, meaning that it looks like a step in reality. 
All right, terraced. Remember terracing where the, the land is cut into a series of steps. Now, how you'd identify this type of landform, uh, sorry, this type of slope on the map, you would see places where the contour lines are first close together, then you see it far apart. So you have alternating areas where the contour lines are close or far apart. So where it's close, it means that we're talking about the steep part of this of the step. Where it's far apart, we're talking about the gentle or the flat part of this slope. All right. So those are the different types of slopes if you're asked to talk about. The slopes on the map. All right. Now, what about if you're asked to talk about the nature and height of the slope? If you're asked to talk about the nature of the slope, you can say whether it's steep, whether it's gentle, whether it's uneven, uneven meaning that you're not really seeing much of a pattern, undulating, undulating is where it's not totally flat, but you're seeing little rises and falls in the land. All right, and a lot of the times when it's an undulating surface, you might find spot heights being used to, to show the, the minor changes in the height okay all right so those are the remember if you're asked to talk about the types of slope you're not going to say steep and gentle you're going to talk about concave convex straight terraced if you're asked to describe the nature of the slope that is when you're going to be talking about whether it's steep gentle or the land is uneven or undulating now, another feature that you're asked to talk about as it relates to relief is the spurs and valleys. So, spurs and valleys look similar on the map, but there is a big difference. Spur is highland jutting out towards lowland. So, spur usually occurs inland, so it's almost like a headland. You know, headland juts out into the sea. Well, for the spur, it's something similar where the land is jutting out, but it's not jutting out towards the sea, it's jutting out towards lower land. So you will identify a spur by V-shaped contour lines where the the, the little the the are are more time, most times it's U shape contour lines, but the smaller part of the V or the U is actually pointing towards lower contour values. So let's say this is 200 and this is 300 and this is 400. Notice that the, the contour is pointing towards the lower contour values. For the valley, it's going to be opposite. So the valley will be pointing towards higher contour values. So let's say that this is 200, 300. 400, what we have here is a valley. And I've put a little river because a lot of the times we have, not all the times so though, we have a river flowing through the valley. All right, the, the lower part of the, the river is usually shown where the, 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 the V is wider and the little 
point, the, 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 in other words, the valley is always pointing towards the, the area where the, 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 the river is at its higher course or its lower course, I should say, where the land is higher. All right. So sometimes it is difficult for you to see the, 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 the numbers on the contour lines. So you can use the shape of the contour lines to even identify the river course to identify whether it's the it's it's the the, the the upper part of the course or the lower part of the or the the lower part of the course. All right. A uh, plane, of course, is where we, we find an absence of contour lines on the map. The depression, sometimes the depression is shown where you have a little circular area with some little tick marks in between. Sometimes it's not, it does not have any tick mark. All you see is a different shade, a slightly different shade. Uh, 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 of, of brown. So it looks like the contour lines, but it has a slightly different shade of brown. So what you'll have to do is to look on the key to familiarize yourself with that. When it comes on to the landforms, uh, we have ridges. Ridges usually have elongated contour lines. So if you look at the top of the ridge, uh, it is long and narrow. That's how you identify the ridge. With the plateau, on the other hand, you'll find the innermost contour wide. And then the land tends to be steeper around it. But what you look at is the innermost contour. So the, the, the fact that it's wide, it's showing that all of this area is flat at the top. Escarpment, also called a cuesta, is a landform that has one side steep and the other side gentle. So if you notice over here, the contour lines are widely spaced, so it's gentle. Over here, the contour lines are closely spaced, so it's steep. This is an escarpment. So if you go look on your map and you find, you see areas where, the, where, where on one side, the contour lines are close together, and on the opposite slope, opposite slope, it is far apart, then we're talking about an escarpment. All right. Now a cliff can be identified on a map by closely spaced contour lines because it's a very steep area. But in most cases, not all, it is so, sometimes it is close together and you know, it's just extremely close together. We know it's a cliff. Sometimes it's so close together that it appears as if the contour lines are actually meeting. Since contour lines cannot meet in reality, we know that this would be a cliff. Now, a lot of the times they will have another symbol to emphasize that this area is a cliff. It's actually a little rock symbol that they would put there because usually a cliff is a rock face because it's difficult for, for, for soil and vegetation to stay on the, 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 the land slope just because it is so steep. So a lot of the times they, they will show a little symbol that it looks like a rock, all right? Um, looks like a rock symbol along the, the, the area where the cliff is. So you could look out for that. All right, passes. Passes are little dips that you will find in the, in the land, especially where there's a ridge. 
So usually on a contour map or a topographic map, you will see something like this. So this little area is the area where you find that little gap, that pass. So the land is rising, 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 and then it dips right here. It's rising on this side and it dips right there and then the land rises up some more. All right, so that is the, the little pass if you're if you're asked to identify that, that little area. All right, now the drainage, you can be asked, if you're asked to describe the drainage of the map, you could talk about the drainage patterns. And there are a number of drainage patterns, but there are three main types that we look at. So we have the radial drainage pattern where, where we have like a conical hill and the land, the water is flowing down the slope. So if you look at the land from above, it appears as if the rivers are radiating from a central area. Then we have dendritic. Dendritic is from the word dendron which means tree. And so dendritic drainage pattern looks like the branches of a tree. And this usually indicates that the land, the rock type is uniform. Then we might find a red, the uh, trellis drainage pattern where the tributaries tend to meet with the main river at a perpendicular or a right angle. This usually develops where the land has alternating layer, layers of hard and soft rocks. All right, if you're describing drainage, again, you might uh, want to talk about the direction that the river is flowing. Remember, the river flows from high land to sea. So you can use that to identify or to describe how the land is flowing. Uh, you might talk, uh, be asked to talk about the drainage density. So how, how many rivers we find within a particular area. If we find a lot of rivers in a lot of area, in a particular area, it means that there's a high drainage density. But there are some areas we will find low drainage densities, for example, over limestone rocks, where the land is permeable, the rock is permeable, and a lot of the rivers might be flowing underground. You don't find a lot of rivers um, on those areas, on those land areas so the drainage density may be low. You might be asked to talk about the size and the shape of the channel, all right? Whether the channel is straight or whether it is meandering, that's the shape. The size of the channel, just look, you will see the, 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 the width of the river. Sometimes in the upper slope, where you're just looking at some tributary streams, it tend to be narrow and then it might get wider uh, as we go to the lower course so you could look out for that and then the next part is the land use or the land use how the land is being used now if you have an area where there's not a lot of settlement but let's say we go to a, a, a uninhabited island then the land use is going to be vegetation. It means that persons have not disturbed that area. Now, when people start settling on in, in, in that area and it becomes um, inhabited, then they're going to start removing vegetation and replace it with agriculture or factories or hotels or schools. They're going to replace it with transportation networks like roads and railways, or they might start building up settlement. 
All right. So vegetation represents a, a, a natural form of land use. So usually we will find this type of land use in areas that are less attractive for settlement. So we'll find a lot of the a lot of the time we'll find vegetation in areas where the land is rugged and it's difficult for people to actually build on or carry out agriculture on those slopes. Those slopes, those areas, those landforms usually would be covered in the natural vegetation. And the last part is where you are asked to talk about the relationship among these different uh, features. So, for example, we'll find that the, 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 the type of drainage or the pattern of drainage might be related to the relief. So, for example, as I said before, you might find if you talk about, let's say, the size of the channel, the smaller channels, you might find the smaller channels in areas where the land is higher and the wider channels where the, the land is lower, closer to the mouth. You might, in terms of the shape of the channel, if we're looking at the relationship between drainage and relief, you might find the, the more meandering uh, channels close to uh, the mouth and therefore in areas where the relief is uh, gentler or flat. <coughs> All right, so that's the type of relationship that you are asked to, to talk about. And then you could also talk about the relationship between the relief and the land use. I just mentioned already that a lot of the time we find uh, vegetation in areas where the, the land uh, is higher or steeper because those areas are avoided, all right? But I shouldn't just say vegetation, uh, like forest or uh, woodland would be found in those highland areas, all right? whereas we would find our mangroves along the coast. Trees and shrubs are usually close to areas where we have settlement. So we, have, we can have relationship among the different land uses. So vegetation uh, can also be related to, to other land uses. So where we find a lot of human settlements, we usually find trees and shrubs. All right, then we could talk about the relationship between transport network and relief. So we often find that we, we, we will have, even in an area where we have transport all over the map area, we tend to find straight roads uh, where the land is flat or gentle. And then we find winding roads where the land is steep because now the roads have to be built around the, 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 uh, the contour. So for example, in an area where we, where we have a spur and the land is jutting out towards lower, lower land, a lot of the times when the road is built, the road is going to go around the spur like that. All right, so we have more winding roads around in areas where the land is steeper and higher. Another thing is that even in terms of the density of the roads, we have more roads where the land is flat and we have less roads where the land is steep or high. And, and when I say steep or high, I don't mean that steep is the same as high because students get that confused. Steep, steep, steep is where the land the, on, a, on a map, where the contour lines are close together. How we identify whether the land is high is based on the values of the contour lines. Bear that in mind. Another thing we will find if we look at the relationship between 
relief and road network is that uh, the type of road will change as the, as the land rises. So we'll find more of the class A or the main roads where the land is flat. And then we will find the minor roads or even unpaved roads where the land is high and where the land is steep. All right. So those are the different relationships. Then you could also be asked to talk about settlement. Remember, settlement, you, 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 if you look on your key, you will see uh, a symbol that shows built up area. That is an area where there's an extensive area of buildings and roads. And then you have areas where you have more scattered settlements. Look for that because you might be asked to talk about the distribution of settlement. You might also be asked to talk about the distribution of population over the map area. And because you're not, it's not like a dot map, what you will use to show, to, 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 to identify population is the, is, the, is, the, is the buildings themselves. So the buildings are usually shown by some little uh, rectangle and square symbols shaded black. So you look for that. Uh, you, 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 if, if, if these buildings form a little line, then we know that is a linear settlement pattern. If they cluster together, a lot of the times along um, road junctions, they may cluster together. Then at the, we are talking about a nucleated settlement pattern. And if they are scattered, especially in high relief areas, we tend to have settlements dispersed over the area. Then we're talking about a dispersed settlement pattern. All right. I know that everything is jumbled. This is not the way I, I like to present my video, but nevertheless. I hope it is helping you. All right, so let me just quickly go through some some um, things that I managed to put together quickly. All right, so this is a this is a cliff. Notice, look at it. As I said to you, it. It's usually a rock face because it's hard to keep on soil and vegetation on this land. This is why we usually see the rock symbol. All right, so on a map, this is how you usually identify the cliff. The, the contour lines are so close together that it appears to meet, even though on some maps, they don't actually appear to meet. They are just very close together. So for example, on this map, we are seeing cliffs along the coast, but they don't appear to meet. They're just very close together. So we know that we have cliffs all along these areas. All right, notice this is a coastline. So you might be asked to talk about the features along the coast. Notice we have a headland here because the land is jutting out. And along this headland, there is a cliff. Right here, there is a bay. And uh, along this bay, there is a cliff. And notice we have a beach inside of this bay. All right, so all along this area, we find a cliff. All right, this again, this is our valley. Notice that the contour line is pointing towards higher land and the contour line looks like a V. Now, another way you can identify a valley, let's say that we have contour lines on opposite sides, and let's say this is 200, 300, 400, and over here we have 200 again, 300, 400, then we know that this land in between would be a valley because the land is rising on this side and, and rising on this side. So it's not always a V. 
we, we usually find the V-shaped contour lines in the, in the more uh, hilly areas. Then this is our spur. Notice it also has this V or U shape, but notice that the, it is pointing towards lower ground. All right, this is our spur. So don't get the spur and the valley confused. All right, so notice. Look at this, this is our valley. A lot of the times the valleys are close, close to the, 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 the spurs. So right here we have our valleys. Right here we have our spurs. This is another valley. This is another spur. This is another valley. We, we, the, the, the spur is, is not very clear over here. All right, so this is a spur again. Highland. Jutting, do, do, jutting out towards lower ground. If you're asked to talk about the direction of the flow of the river and you say, oh, I don't know where, where the sea is, notice where the contour lines open up, where it's wider, this indicates the, the uh, lower slopes where it gets narrow in other words the, the, the contour line will be pointing towards the higher slopes so that it means that this river is flowing in this direction all right bear that in mind all right All right, here, this, look at this. This is a, an area where there's a cliff. It's very steep on, on, uh, on the sides, but notice at the top, it is flat. This is a plateau. All right, so the land rises all around and then it is flat at the top. That's a plateau. All right, so on a map, as I said to you, the plateau would be identified by the inner contour, the inner contour line being widely spaced, and then the contours around are usually steep. Sometimes it's not straight like this. Sometimes you have some little indentations in the contour lines to show that uh, fluvial activities are actually shaping the land. All right. All right, this is our ridge. All right, this was uh, me trying to, to show what the, the, the ridge would look like in reality, but this is how it looks on the map. Notice that the contour lines, especially the innermost contour lines are long and narrow or they have an elongated shape. So this is a picture of the ridge. Notice it's rising from all sides and notice that the, 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 the top is long and narrow. So if you had contour lines drawn along this ridge, the contour lines would be long and narrow. Okay. All right. Notice on the syllabus it talked about uh, the passes. Uh, all right. So we have uh, we have um, saddles and calls. These are the names that you will usually see. All right. So saddles and calls are slightly lower lands between peaks. Uh, generally, the difference between the, the, the saddle and the call is that the saddle tends to be wider than the call. All right. And uh, when you have uh, a lower gap in the land, then we could talk about 
a pass or a gap. Uh, the pass usually has uh, a road. That's why it's called a pass, because it allows you to pass. All right, so the, the pass usually has a road uh, going through it. So on the contour map or the topographic map, this is how you would usually identify these gaps. Looks like when you, you, you make an egg and you have the, 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 the yellow on either side. All right. So what this means is that the land rises to 800 and then you have this little gap in between. So the land is rising on uh, two sides and it is descending on two sides. All right, see there? So it rises on this side and, and, and on this side, but it descends on this side and, and on the opposite side that you're not seeing. All right, and uh, quickly, the drainage patterns again. This is the dendritic drainage pattern. Remember, dendritic uh, comes from the, the word dendron, which means tree-like, so it looks like the branches of a tree. And if you're asked to talk about the geology, even though you're not seeing geology, geology is not, not, not obvious when you look on the map. Drainage can indicate, drainage is one of the things that can indicate something about the geology. So when you see a lot of dendritic drainage pattern, what it shows you is that the land is generally uniform. The, the rocks are uniform. Then, we have our trellis drainage pattern. Notice that the, the streams tend to meet at a right angle. Notice 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. Again, this tells us something about the rock. It means that we have alternating areas of hard and soft rocks. So right here, the land is resistant. Right here, it's resistant. Right here, it is softer. So you find that the, 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 the river is flowing uh, through the, the, the areas where the, the rock is less resistant. And the areas that are more resistant will stand out as some little ridges because it was actually difficult for the rocks to actually uh, break these areas of land. All right, so these areas stand up. So these, this is why we, we find these alternating um, areas of hard and soft rock and these uh, this drainage pattern that has this perpendicular uh, angle where they meet. And then our radial drainage pattern, notice an area where the land has a conical ill shape, for example, of a volcano, the rivers start at a particular point and they flow down on all sides. So it looks from above as if the rivers are radiating from a point, like the spokes of a, of a bicycle. All right, so this is where I stop. Um, I hope that this helps. All the best in your exams.